Hello and welcome to this video on missing data handling in M+. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. I usually talk about multivariate methods including structural equation modeling, factor analysis, multi-level modeling and latent class analysis. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to check out the description for additional resources, including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter, as well as workshops that I offer for Quantfish. In this video, I want to show you how MPLUS handles missing data. Specifically, I want to talk about the MPLUS default setting for handling missing values, which is full information maximum likelihood estimation. So let's dive right into it. Let's take a look at this M plus syntax and output file that I have here in which I estimated a simple uh, linear regression analysis with two predictor variables. So here I have a dependent variable y and I have two independent or predictor variables x1 and x2 and I have missing values. You can see that in my variable statement I coded missing values or I indicated that my missing value code for all variables is 999. So there may be missing scores on either x1, x2 or y as we will see later in the output and those missing scores in the data file are indicated with a code 999. And so Mplus knows, okay, if I encounter a missing score in the data set that, or if I encounter a score that is 999, then that means a missing value. So that would be the first step. If you had missing values in your data set, you would code them with a specific missing value code, either numerical, or you could have, for example, an asterisk indicating missing scores. And then you tell Mplus, in the variable statement how missing values are coded. You would not delete cases with missing scores first, but rather you would include them in your data set because Mplus is able to handle uh, data sets that have partial data or where you have missing scores. And um, as I said, the default in Mplus is full information, maximum likelihood estimation. So now what's going to happen is that Mplus will by default estimate this regression model where y is regressed on x1 and x2 in a multiple linear regression analysis and it will include cases that have only partial data. So somebody who has maybe only data on y and x1 but not x2 will still be included in the analysis and full information maximum likelihood means that all the information will be extracted from uh, even partial data. So even if somebody only has data on y or only on x1 or only x2, they will still be included. To ensure that this is the case, that everybody will be included, including people who have missing scores on exogenous variables, meaning predictor variables, x1 or x2, we also list the variances of x1 and x2 as parameters explicitly in our model statement. Otherwise, M plus would not include cases that have missing values on exogenous variables. So that is important. That is to say a thing that confuses many people in M plus when they have missing scores on exogenous variables, then they will, and they do not list the parameters related to the exogenous variables explicitly in the model statement, then they'll find in the output that Mplus will give them a warning message that says um, there are cases with missing scores on exogenous variables. These were not included in the analysis. So in order to avoid that, in order that, in order to avoid losing those cases, we explicitly put the exogenous variables into the model and we can do that by listing their variances as parameters here in the model. This doesn't change our regression model other than allowing us to include those cases with missing scores on x1 and x2 also in the analysis. So that's important and that's something that um, is not obvious. Uh, when we first use M plus and we might overlook this. So when you do this, make sure you list your exogenous variables explicitly in your model statement so that 
those missing scores will also be included. Another thing that is not done by default in M plus is that if you have any missing data correlates, any so-called auxiliary variables, that um, meaning that uh, those are variables that correlate with dropout or correlate with missing lists. Let's say, for example, um, there are uh, you have age as a variable in your model and some people didn't report data on their age and so on, that might be correlated with certain other variables where certain people in certain groups don't like to report their age. And so if you have a variable that is correlated with missing values on age, such as here the variable Z, then um, you can include that variable as a so-called auxiliary variable that would then be that would then provide information on the um, on why people have missing scores and so that would help us retain more statistical power reduce bias potentially if we have auxiliary variables that inform the missing data mechanism or are related to the missing data mechanism and so here these are listed then with the auxiliary m command in m plus and then m plus knows that these variables are supposed to be included behind the scenes in what is called a saturated correlates approach where those variables are included in the model without disturbing your model so you won't even see that in the output file that those auxiliary variables are um, part of the analysis because they simply have a technical function. They simply help us to include information about why data points are missing behind the scenes without disrupting our analysis as such. You can include more than one auxiliary variable and you should include all variables that are correlated with missingness. So you should do this in the first step, I should run an analysis of um, finding out which variables might be correlated with missingness or dropout and then those variables should be included as auxiliary variables in your analysis. Also I included a keyword here in the output command that is called patterns. The patterns command allows us to study missing data patterns so then we can see which cases were missing how many cases on which variables and so that is um, an important uh, information for us also to look at. So let's scroll down and take a look at the output and you can see that in total we had 300 observations and that includes cases with incomplete data. So among those 300 some didn't have complete data on all three variables and that will be shown in more detail below when we look at the missing data patterns. So you can see here that Y is our continuous dependent variable in the model. The observed independent or exogenous variables were X1 and X2 and we had an observed auxiliary variable Z that plays a role behind the scenes as a missing data correlate. Then we can see next in the summary of data that there were four different unique missing data patterns that are listed in more detail below or defined, so to say. You can see that the missing data pattern number one in M plus is always the complete data pattern if there is a complete data pattern. And so you can see that um, there is there are X's here for all three variables where the X means not missing. So this shows you that pattern number one is a pattern of complete data. And when we look at the frequencies, you can see that pattern number one had a frequency of 145. So 145 cases had complete data. The next pattern number two is one where data were present for the dependent variable and the second predictor variable. So Y and X2 did have data, but those individuals were missing data on X1. And those were 36 cases here. Pattern number three was missing data on the dependent variable Y. And 
those were 28 cases and then finally pattern number four is one where we had data only on x2 and not on y or x1 and you can see they were still included those were 91 cases now of importance if you didn't list x1 and x2 uh, explicitly in your model statement then you would lose cases that have missing values on x1 and x2 and so that would cost you a lot of data so to say that would then not be available for your model for the estimation of the parameter so it's really important to include those variables in your model statement so that you don't lose those cases next we get a summary of the covariance coverage and that's given by default you don't have to specifically ask for that when you use when you have missing data and you use full information maximum likelihood estimation the default then you automatically get that information about covariance coverage and so what is covariance coverage it means the proportion of data that is present so it gives you in this matrix here the proportions of data that was present for example 60.3 percent of the data that was present could be used or was available to estimate the variance of y so there was enough information so to say 60 percent over 50 percent of cases provided information on this variance you can see the lowest value here is for the covariance between y and x1 which was only 48.3 percent of cases that could be used to um, derive information on that covariance but overall this still looks pretty good so we have a coverage between 48.3 percent and 60.3 percent here the minimum coverage value in m plus is 10 percent so if you if something fell below 10 percent in the coverage then m plus would not run the model anymore that's kind of an arbitrary cutoff but it would mean so say that 90 percent more than 90 percent of data are missing for a given variance or covariance and then m plus would say well you should revisit this does this really make sense still to estimate this model because you have so little information and that might then lead to invalid results potentially you can still override this and you could still run the model even if you had lower coverage but in that case so to say it should give you pause and you should think about it whether it makes sense so here we're clearly above this uh, this value of 0.10 with all our variances and covariances and so we shouldn't have a problem notice also that for the variance of x2 we have a hundred percent coverage and that's because in the missing data there's not a missing data pattern here that has missing value on x2 so x2 is always present in all four um, patterns and therefore the variance of x can be estimated so say based on a hundred percent of the cases and that's why we have the 1.0 here now what is important is to not misinterpret this matrix as a covariance matrix sometimes people get confused and they think oh i have the covariances here and that's not the case this aren't the covariances between the variables but this is the coverage that tells you the proportion of cases that are available to estimate each variance and covariance the actual covariances that are estimated based on FIML are given in the sample statistics so that's the next section where we get descriptive statistics first of all the means of the three variables then the actual covariance matrix so this is the covariance matrix and then also the correlation matrix with Pearson product moment correlations now notice that these descriptive statistics are already based on full information maximum likelihood estimation including missing data so these statistics will typically differ from statistics that you would get for example in SPSS with listwise or pairwise deletion methods because these here do include the information about the auxiliary variable and they include the information uh, from all cases so not just the cases with complete data so that's already based on FIML estimation then we get also univariate descriptive statistics and then our 
um, model fit information, which in this case, we have a saturated model. This is a regression analysis. And so the chi-square here is not relevant for us. The value is zero, degrees of freedom are zero because this is a saturated regression model. This would be different typically if you had a CFA or a structural equation model with more than zero degrees of freedom, then you would also get fit statistics as if you had complete data. So you don't even see in the output really that FIML was used other than from the covariance coverage and from the missing data pattern information. But other than that, all the information is provided in the same way as it would if you had complete data or if you had used listwise deletion. Next are the model results with the estimated regression coefficients. So here we have our B1 and B2, the unstandardized regression coefficient estimates and their standard errors, uh, as well as a Z statistic for testing the significance of the coefficients and P values. You can see here that the estimated regression slope coefficient B1 is not statistically significant with a p-value above 0.05 and then the second one is statistically significant with a p-value that is smaller than 0.05 and so those give you the regression coefficients in the same way as usual but including missing values here using FIML. Also the covariance between the exogenous variables is included so 0.77 is the covariance between x1 and x2 with a standard error and a test statistic as well as a p-value. You can see x1 and x2 here are substantially correlated. Now this isn't the correlation because here we have the unstandardized solution but this is the covariance and you can see the covariance is significant which then also indicates that the, the corresponding standardized covariance or correlation is also significant. We get the means here of the exogenous variables. We get the intercept of the regression and the variances of the exogenous variables as well as the residual variance estimate for our dependent variable. Now, if we had asked for the standardized solution STDYX, which here I didn't, then we, you would also get the standardized regression coefficients as usual in M+. But here in this case, those are unstandardized parameter estimates for the regression model. So you can see that the M plus defaults for missing data handling are actually quite convenient. You um, can include missing values and full information maximum likelihood will be carried out by M plus. You don't even see in the output that anything is different with regard to the regression model. And so there's no specific um, option that you have to ask for or specific things in the output that are different other than that you get the missing data patterns, you get your covariance coverage, so you can study that. And you can also see that the auxiliary variable Z does not appear in the model, so it does not disrupt your model, it doesn't lead to a different interpretation or additional output, it just simply is included behind the scenes to take that information about missing values into account. I hope you found this video useful to learn more about how M plus handles missing values by default. This is a practical option whether you use a simple regression, a path model, a confirmatory factor model or a structural equation model. You can in that way very easily include all available cases and then you don't lose data, you don't lose power, you don't throw information away. So it's a very useful and convenient option that is used here in M plus by default. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and to check out the description for additional resources, including a, a course on missing data handling in M that I offer through Quantfish. And I'll see you next time.